Hello everyone, welcome back to Z Physics and welcome back to our new series in which we are solving past paper questions based on specific topics. In today's video, I'm going to be looking at some typical questions on astrophysics and cosmology. Just a quick note that you can navigate this video using the timestamps and uh, additionally, you can find links to all of the past paper questions in the description of the video. The best thing to do would be to tackle and try and solve these questions independently first and then come back to this video and check your answers. Just a little note that these are not official solutions and please check out the official exam board website for the official marks games. Okay, well, let's get started with question nine from a paper from 2010 that is to describe the formation of the sun. And this question is for five marks. Okay, well, let's have a look at my solution. Okay, so here is my answer. So the sun was formed from an interstellar dust cloud nebula that has undergone gravitational collapse. As the star or as the nebula is undergoing a gravitational collapse, gravitational potential energy is getting converted to kinetic energy and hence the temperature increases and at around 10 million Kelvin or around 10 to the power of 7 Kelvin, hydrogen nuclei fuse to form helium nuclei. So this is really important that we use the word nuclei, so I'm just going to be underlining this. The sun becomes then a main sequence star when fusion is ignited and a key balance uh, essentially equation for a main sequence star is that radiation pressure is equal to gravitation pressure or to the gravitation pressure. So this is really really important. Okay, so part B. After the death of a low mass star such as our sun, the remnant core is a white dwarf. State two properties of a white dwarf. Well, number one, it's very hot. It's also very dense. Remember, in a white dwarf, we have the mass of the close to the mass of the entire sun that's now contained into approximately the size of a planet. So it's very, very dense indeed. And additionally, we have the Chandra second limit, which states that the mass needs to be less than 1.4 solar masses. Okay, next on, which is question 9 from the OCR paper from June 2012. Now, 9a is more about fusion, which is about nuclear physics, so I'm going to be solving that later on while revising nuclear physics. I'm going to be focusing on the rest of the question. So part B is asking us to describe and explain the evolution of a star much more massive than our sun. So a star much more massive than our, than our sun will eventually run out of its fuel. So once it runs out of hydrogen, so we can say that once the star runs out of fuel, The outer layers expand and turn and the star will turn to a red giant. So we can say that the outer layers expand and it turns into a red giant. Now the red giant stage doesn't last long. After that a supernova occurs. So a supernova will occur and then depending on the mass of the star uh, we're either going to have a neutron star or a black hole so depending on the mass of the star a neutron star or a black hole will be formed And that will be one mark for each of those statements. Okay, right, let's have a look at the next one. In the universe, there's about 10 to the 11 galaxies, each with about 10 to the power of 11 
stars, each having a mass of about 10 to the power of 30 kg. Estimate the attractive gravitational force between the two galaxies separated by a distance of 4 times 10 to the power of minus or 10 to the plus 22. Okay, well, we're just going to use the fact that the gravitational force, let's call it Fg, is equal to minus gmm over r squared. So this will be equal to minus 6.67 times 10 to the power of minus 11. So we have 10 to the 11 stars, and each of them have a mass of about uh, 10 to the power of 30 kg, so it's going to be times 10 to the 11 times 10 to the power of 30. Overall, it's going to be about 10 to the power of 41. And let's divide that by the distance, which is about 4 times 10 to the power of 22. We're not going to forget to square this. Okay, let's put this into a calculator. And we're going to get about 4.2 multiplied by 10 to the power of 26 newtons. At least, of course, that's the magnitude. Typically, we have the minus sign, which we've just ignored for our final answer, just to show that the force is attractive. Okay, so part B, explain why the galaxies do not collapse on each other. So this is happening because the galaxies are actually receding. So we can say that the galaxies are receding. And this is due to the expansion of the universe. So I'm just going to write a few things that can score marks on this question. So it can say that the universe is expanding. And this, of course, is fueled by dark energy. Okay, part C, describe qualitatively the evolution of the universe immediately after the Big Bang to the present day. Well, part C of this question is asking us to describe the entire history of the universe from the Big Bang to the present day. Okay, well, let's have a go. So here is a summary of the entire history of the universe immediately after the Big Bang to the present day. We're not expecting to state the times of various stages of the evolution. So at the very beginning, at the Big Bang, the entire universe was very hot and very, very dense. In fact, infinitely dense right at the start. As the universe is expanding, it is also cooling down. Then quarks form in this quark lepton soup era. Remember, quark is a particle that makes up the protons. The quarks then are going to combine to form protons and neutrons and suddenly we have the ingredients to form atoms and atoms are formed. Eventually the cosmic microwave background radiation is released which is responsible for a temperature of 2.7 Kelvin in outer space. Okay, on to the next question. Okay, next one, which is question 11a from an OCR paper from 2013. One estimate of the age of the universe is 13.7 times 10 to the power of 9 years. Calculate Hubble's constant in kilometers per second per megaparsec using this age. Okay, so normally when we're calculating Hubble's constant, um, we're going the other way. So we're given a Hubble's constant, then we calculate the age of the universe. But do not worry, we can do all of these calculations in reverse. So the equation that I'm going to be using is that Hubble's constant h naught is equal to 1 over the uh, the age of the universe. I'm going to call that age just uh, just t. Okay, so uh, we can use the fact that we're given that the age of the universe is 13.7 billion years, which is 13.7 times 10 to the 9 times 365 days. Each of them has 24 hours. Each of them has 60 minutes times 60 seconds like so and then we're going to get that Hubble's constant in SI units is about 2.314 let's leave it as 2.31 multiplied by 10 to the power of minus 18 seconds to the power of minus 1. Now all we need to do is just to convert seconds to the power of minus 1 to kilometers per second per megaparsec. 
So we're going to be using our usual conversion factor in reverse. So if we have 2.31 multiplied by 10 to the power of minus 18, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be multiplying by 3.09 times 10 to the power of uh, 16, which is a parsec. Now, I need to convert it to a megaparsec though, so I'm going to be multiplying it by an another, another factor of 10 to the power of 6, and then I'm just going to be dividing it by the factor of kilometers, which is 10 to the 3. If I put that into a calculator, I'm going to get about 71.4 kilometers per second per megaparsec. This is well within the estimates of Hubble's constant, so we know that our answer is probably correct because it's very close to the accepted value, which is around 70 kilometers per second per megaparsec. Okay, part two, the wavelength of the hydrogen alpha spectral line in the lab is 656 nanometers. Calculate the observed wavelength of this spectral line in the spectrum of another galaxy, which is 50 megaparsecs away from the Earth. Okay, well, this is a Doppler shift question. So the formula for that is that our change in wavelength divided by our wavelength measured in the lab is about equal to the recession speed divided by the speed of light. Now, uh, what we're really interested in is our fractional change in wavelength because we already know that our lambda is 656 nanometers. So this here is our lambda. Okay, well, we don't really know the recession speed, but we could really easily work that out using Hubble's law. So I'm just going to be using that V is equal to Hubble's constant multiplied by the distance. And we know that Hubble's constant from the previous question is about 71.4. We're given the um, value kilo kilometers per second per megaparsec. So let's multiply that by 50 megaparsecs and this will give me about 3570 which is 3.57 times 10 to the power of 3 kilometers per second remember if h naught is given by kilometers per second per megaparsec and if d is given in megaparsecs then our speed will be given in kilometers Per second. Let's convert that to SI units. So just uh, given that kilo is 10 to the 3, so it's going to be 3.57 times 10 to the power 6 meters per second. So now that we have our V, we can work out our fractional change in the wavelength. In fact, we could just work out our delta lambda. So let's just rearrange for delta lambda. So this will be equal to V over C multiplied by the wavelength. And um, what we're going to get is that our speed, which is 3.57 times 10 to the power of 6, let's divide it by the speed of light, which is 3.0, multiplied by 10 to the 8. And now all we need to do is just multiply that by the, uh, by the wavelength, which is 656 nanometers, so times 10 to the power of minus 9. Let's put that in a calculator to get about 7.8 nanometers which is, of course, about 7.8 times 10 to the power of minus 9. Oh, I've just seen that our units at the end need to be just in nanometers, so we're fine just working in nanometers. Okay, well, our um, wavelength will be increasing because our galaxy is receding away from us. So all we need to do to get the right answer is take 656 nanometers and then add that 7.8 nanometers, which is going to give us about 664 nanometers. Okay, next one, which is about diffraction gratings. So this question is about light from a low energy compact fluorescent lamps, which are replacing filament lamps in the home. Okay, so we have 
the incident beam is passing through a diffraction grating and then it's splitting into first order spectrum with the central beam. Now because we have multiple different arrows we can see that the different colors are going to split by a different angle. On the figure label one set of the lines in the first order spectrum as R, G and V to indicate which is red green and violet. The equation that governs the fraction gradings is that d sine theta is equal to n lambda. Now if our wavelength is higher the sine of the angle will be higher which means that our way our angle as well will be higher. So the highest angle will correspond to red and which has the longest wavelength and the one with the shortest wavelength will be violet and uh, green will be in between. Okay, part two, explain why the bright central beam appears white. Well, we can say that all three colors add up to produce white light. Okay, part three, the line separation D on the grating is 1.67 times 10 to the power of minus six. Calculate the wavelength lambda producing the first order line at an angle of 19.1 degrees to the central beam. Okay, so I'm going to use D sine theta is equal to N lambda. Because we're looking for the wavelength, our wavelength will be uh, just equal to D sine theta divided by N, but in this case N is equal to 1, so this will just be equal to 1.67 multiplied by 10 to the power of minus 6, which is D multiplied by sine of the angle, which is given in this question as 19.1 degrees and let's put this into a calculator and we're going to get 5.46 times 10 to the power of minus 7 meters. Okay folks, well we're going to stop here. Thank you very much for watching. I really hope you found this video useful. You've enjoyed this video as well. Well done for revising and I shall see you in the next video.